Welcome to the Need to Know Music Show with me, Rona McManus. And today I'm joined by the singer of a West London Scar outfit who describe themselves as a band of London lyrical, not so normal original characters, not shy of scribing songs from their soul. It is the one and only Jim Soul. How are you doing, mate? I'm good, Ronan. How are you, mate? I'm good. We're, we're, we're old friends. I think cards on the table. I think we've got to be a little bit up front with people that we know. We've known each other for too long. I'm not going to put a number on that. But uh, yeah, so um, how, how have you been during the lockdown? Do, do you know what? I've, I, I've thought about this quite a lot, but I might be one of these rare people. I've actually really enjoyed it. And I know, I know on every single level, I'm not supposed to say that, but I have genuinely enjoyed it. I mean, I've spent time with the kids you know, writing music and, and, and just, you know, taking stock of stuff that's kind of important and kind of doing less of the nonsense that you just do that's kind of cyclic that you don't even think about. So I've had a great time. Sun's been out. What's the moan about? <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> there don't be so many, so many dead people. <laughs> I'm going to have to cut that. <laughs> I don't mean that. You know I don't mean that. No, no it's, it's been... It's been I've, I, think I know it's you been, mean. It's, it feels like almost like a sort of an enforced recalibration of everything. It's almost like everyone's gone, oh, right. And that's, that's a good thing because I think generally it's been people being more compassionate or being more sociable. Or ironically, you know, you get to know your neighbours a bit more and stuff like that. So, you no, know, I think it's been good. Yeah, with my, uh, obviously, my wife being a, being a nurse, there's been a lot more uh, appreciation of... Uh, of what they do and I think also teachers with people having to homeschool I think you know um, there's been a lot more appreciation of what those people do for us I think is one of the things that's really that's really come out of it that, that, I've, that I've found. Um, totally and, and look you know I, 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 I have a political bias but I always find that in times like this people sort of lean more on sort of I suppose what you'd kind of see as traditional kind of social values and and that's that's good from for as far as i'm concerned you know this this idea of you know really kind of appreciating what you've got and and also you know silly things like you know when you are kind of concerned about what you know whether you can get to the shops and and you buy things and you do pick up a couple of extra tins of beans for the neighbor next door and stuff it's very kind of it's very kind of I like, it's very community spirit you know sort of engaging and i think that's amazing that, that, that's the best absolutely thing Absolutely, yeah. And so musically, I mean, you guys are a nine-piece band, so, and obviously you're not in it for the money. Um, <laughs> yeah. but, uh, we're, but in, we're, in you, social, how... we're in it for the social distancing. So basically, if you lined it all up, <laughs> we'd be 18 metres apart. <laughs> <laughs> you're, basically, you're... You, could, you, could, you could take a free kick, and it looked good on TV from the length of the band members to the goal. <laughs> <laughs> So, I mean, how have you, have you done anything musically? Have you been able to do anything like, there's obviously a lot of people to organise there. Yeah, well, it's funny because, you know, as I suppose you, you would have got from a lot of people in this community as well, musical community or artistic community or whatever, or even just social community, what you end up doing is you do a, you do a thing like a Zoom thing or whatever it is. And the first one, you have the best intentions of like, we're going to talk about this. And then before you know where you are, you're just cracking open the beers and talking rubbish. So we did a bit of that um, at the start. And then, and I think, I don't know, I don't know, you, Ronan, you're a great songwriter yourself. So you tend to sort of try and write a song, don't you, about how you feel about things. And then you, in, you instantly realise that that's not really, it, it just sounds like platitude. It doesn't sound like you mean it. But it leads you down a path to write songs about other things. So it, it's funny because I, I've, although I've had elements of maybe having musical ideas or, or writing sort of lyrical ideas about <clears throat> things that are of the now they've they've quite often been about something compl completely different but they've had elements of it in there so so yeah i mean we've we got together a couple of us and had not songwriting um sessions as such because i mean i don't know but to the uninitiated maybe because there's a bit of a delay in time between when people talk to do things collaboratively sometimes can be difficult because there is just a tiny you know millisecond delay um, so we haven't had, we haven't had, it's more a case of, oh, have you heard, I've got this, and then you start playing and everyone's quiet, <laughs> and then you sort of end, and then they go, yeah, it's really good, 
I've got one as well, you know, that kind of thing. So that's been good so on that one. It's sort of like sort of, sort of walkie-talkie conversations. You have to say over and then the next person can talk. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I think people should do that in real life anyway. They should just like in conversations. Like, as you're talking, just go over. And then at the end, you should say, Roger Wilco. <laughs> Over and out. I'm like, I'm, I'm late. <laughs> yeah. At least we know where we are. You see, the Germans have got it right because the, the point of the conversation is at the end of the, the sentence. So you have to listen to the whole sentence to know what they were talking about. Whereas English, <laughs> you can get two words in and go, oh, you there, you So, no, um, we've, we've done a bit. I've been in contact with um, a lot of the lads or some of the lads. And we've we talked about more sort of like what we what we kind of would like to do moving forward. And. And because again, it, it, we've all sort of gone away and had lots of thoughts about, oh, how, you know, how's this going to be now? Are you going to play live as much? Are you going to do this? So it's almost been like coming up with different ideas and maybe sort of thinking about doing it slightly differently. And so, yeah, it's, it's, it's been I think, constructive. I think the live stream thing seems to be by all the conversations I've had, it seems to be here, here at the stage to a certain extent. And, to kind of, even when things are back to normal, you feel like people are still going to live stream. Um, mm. Is that something you guys have talked about, about going forward, about sort of doing some kind of live stream thing? Yeah, we did. And, and in fact, we, we were talking about doing, you know, almost like virtual festivals and stuff like that. I mean, I, I did, um, not, not um, an original one, but I did, um, I don't, generally speaking, I don't do the, um, as much of the live streaming this you know or haven't done as recently but I, I did a couple and one of the ones i did was like a sort of a, a virtual festival thing it was a charity kind of thing <clears throat> and it was quite cool because um you all had a little slot and you did your thing and i think i probably watched almost everyone and i'll be honest with you when you're an artist at a professional uh, a festival you like to think that you watch everyone but you kind of don't. You watch a few. You watch what you can. You know, blah blah blah. And then someone wants to talk to you, or you're having a beer or whatever. So it's actually quite nice to be part of the festival where I saw most everybody else that was on the bill. All right. Okay. Yeah. And it's, you can watch I mean, it again as well. That's the other thing. Is that you don't have to actually say, oh, "I was there." Here's my wristband. I turned up. You can watch it again if someone streamed it. You know, and that's that's a that's yeah. the debate. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I know that you guys did. Um, you, you did a, a song for our artists for NHS uh, campaign, yeah. which is uh, so. Thanks very much for doing that. Um, yeah, yeah. And you, and you basically got like four of you together. You did kind of like the the overlay recordings. We all record your own bit and put it together afterwards. Um, and that's been but even that's a nightmare. Really you know, it's an it's an absolute <laughs> nightmare because you think, well, it can't be that difficult, can it? And but it really is because you you start off and you play something and then um, somebody else comes in and, and plays a bit and we tried to do we tried to do it as live as we kept we could and we tried to incorporate what they recorded live as they listened to it rather than so in fact if you if you if you listen to it it goes out of time every now and again and there's some delay but I think that's all kind of what it should be well it's the what I sort of found with a lot of I've done a few of those is obviously I would normally be the first person so I don't get I don't get to play with anybody so I'll be the first, but I'll put the guitar yeah, yeah, and the yeah. vocal down, then everyone else is on, is on top of that. So you, like, you used to sort of, when you play live, you, you know, you're used to bouncing off each other, aren't you, a little bit? And it's yeah, sort of yeah, the yeah. song kind of breathes and you kind of give each other a bit of space, whatever it is. And it's kind of a sort of part of being a band, especially you, in a nine piece, you must really have to give and take and let people have their space and, and have their little time to shine and you take a back seat, then you're the, you know what I mean? There's a lot of that yeah. going on during live performances, but... You can't do any of that, even virtually. It's almost you've got to be. It's almost really an insensitive way of of. of it's, you know, it's not it's not a replacement for it, really, is it? But I, do you know what? It was really really it occurred to me when we were doing that one, uh, um, because you know, as a band, it's the only one that we've contributed to. In and then that's a conscious decision as well that we didn't want really, but we were more than passionate to put a name to that. But we haven't we haven't found the right occasion or the right thing that we were you know sort of w willing to get ourselves behind as much but what's really weird about it is, is um it kind of almost becomes like a love letter rather than a conversation it's kind of you know the way that you know someone might write you a letter back in the day or, or an email i suppose and you would read it to yourself and there's an internal mo monologue well these live stream performances they almost seem like it's that it's more like a conversation that you're having you're putting out to the world but you're not expecting a response 
because I know you've done a few of the live streams. I've done one or two. And it's funny because you get to the end of the song and you wait for the applause <laughs> or lack of. And you think, right, right, I'll feel this dead air then. <laughs> and so it's, it's, like, almost... it's awkward, like you sort of say, thank you. As if, as if there's like, you know, yeah. it's pretend applause in your head. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Going mental. <laughs> and you have to say the same things over and over again. So uh, thanks very much and please support the thing or do whatever. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I, um, like I say, it's almost like I, I saw it more as um, doing like a, um, a letter to somebody or, or, or an email and saying this is, this is what it was at that moment. It's, it's, it's a moment in time, but it's not a uh, collaborative with the audience thing or the listener or the watcher. It's more of a, right, this is us presenting the thing. But different to a video because I think, you know, when you're doing pop videos if you want to call them that you're actually trying to look as cool as you possibly can and fool as many people into believing that you're good looking or whatever or interesting <laughs> as possible whereas this you're sort of going well we're all past that <laughs> so here's yeah. us and some guitars you know here's us here's us in our pants so, yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah we, well that was that was floated as an idea but we thought no <laughs> the idea was to get money <laughs> not lawsuits <laughs> So how did you sort of get into music then, Jim? Um, just sort of, how, what, what, what age were you that you really sort of discovered this, that music as a, as a kind of a thing you wanted to do? It, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I have been asked this question like several times in different interviews and different things. And it's a really weird one for me because I'm not, I'm not entirely sure See, now I grew up in a family where most people, you know, you would sing around the house and they'd sing and my dad played a bit of guitar and he wasn't a professional or anything, but he played a bit. And so <clears throat> I didn't really think that there was anything odd about walking around singing out loud. I just thought that's what you did. You know, whether you were coming back from school or <clears throat> whatever. And, I, and I'm not saying that I'm particularly good at it, but I just assumed that everybody could hold the tune. That I, I didn't think it was any particularly good skill to write home about because I knew lots of people who could do that and then I, I remember being about 15 and uh, I was in metal work or something like that and I was singing and this kid come in and he said oh was there a radio one and I said no 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 there's no radio and he said well I've just heard some and I said oh I was just singing as I was doing my thing oh you know it was really good and all the rest of it and that was the first time I remember thinking oh music that's the way ahead but I never I never learned any sort of music formally or, or guitar or anything until I was a little older I was about 20 so I got in bands when I was sort of 16 17 just because I was the lariest one of our mates. So I would be the one that would go stand up on stage and not be bothered by it. But it wasn't, it wasn't born out of a, I need to be a performer or a, a musician. And it was really, <clears throat> I suppose, when I started playing guitars and stuff that I thought, wow, you know, this is, I, I love all this. And then I'd listen to lots of different music. And, but we always had music in my house. It was, music was quite a big thing. My mum hates TV, so she would watch it, but there'd be music on in the background. Well, yeah, yeah, I had a similar sort of house, really. It was just every night descended into a gig. Uh, and yeah. I just thought that was normal. <laughs> I didn't realise that. <laughs> well, yeah, look, and, and you meet other people and you go, what, that doesn't happen in your house? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, I, mean, and I, and I, I think it's more a case of, it's not arrogance at all. It's just, it's just, that's what you do. I mean, you know, some families get together and cook or some families get together and, you know they're big into cards or whatever it is and 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 i think other situations they're just you're into that you're into playing and then a, a, loads of my mates play guitar i mean i was a sportsman so I, I was into boxing and football and i thought i was going to be you know one of those uh, a, a boxer or you know maybe a, a football player but i wasn't quite of the standard i did okay but i wasn't quite of the standard and and it was music really i fell into it as something i did when i wasn't doing sport and then I suddenly realised, hang on a minute, there's, there's definitely more female interest than being a boxer. There's definitely, uh, <laughs> there's definitely more drink involved than, than when you're playing football. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I kind of, I had a sort of gentle fall into it rather than a, I'm passionate about, I didn't learn music as a kid. I didn't have any lessons at school or any of those things. I mean, we sort of, we obviously, um, how I kind of really got to know you is around that Twickenham scene. I grew up in Twickenham and, and there's that, there was that time when we were kind of, there was, there was a lot, hang on, get out, get out. Some of my kids have just turned up. So, 
Yes, I, I'm on. <laughs> that's that's great this. parenting right there. Get out. <laughs> Hi. Get out. It's Jim. Hi. <laughs> we can we can cut there's this. There's a wolf in the front room, so I can't go and put my phone on the floor. Okay, just I'll, I'll be out in a little while. I'll be out in a little while. I'm just doing a bit of work. God, that's amazing, isn't it? <laughs> we'll have to edit all that. Never work with children and animal or something. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. There's a wasp Never in the other room, so. <laughs> Sorry, I've, got one, um... I've got one in a cage downstairs, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> so, you know, so we sort of know each other from the Twickenham scene as it was, you know, I grew up in Twickenham and we sort of played all around the pubs. There was, there seemed a real vibrant uh, music scene, but it was mainly social scene that kind of really drove it. The music almost seemed like a, just a backdrop to what just I have memories of just great times, lots of drinking, lots of uh, lots of laughing and playing a bit of football and, and maybe just trying to squeeze a gig in or two. But we were all musicians at the time and that was a amazing sort of thing. But that was I think that was kind of extension of the of the of the family thing we both experienced. I think there was such a fantastic level of musicianship on that on that scene. I mean what were your memories of that? <sighs> I do you know what it, my memories was and and it's I, I saw um, this is gonna sound pretentious but it's not I saw a documentary uh, it was Pearl Jam and they were talking about the early Seattle scene and they were saying about how the, all the other bands knew each other and they were all mates and so they'd all turn up to each other's gigs and they'd all support each other and this that, and the other and it's really funny because I've, I've, I've often think back to that and I think that all of us they, and there were so many diverse different people as well that did different things but there was there was rivalry in a kind of you wanted to be good you wanted to be you didn't want to look worse than people that were playing but everyone loved each other's music and everyone loved what they did and everyone was kind of into so you know if I saw you went going past the window I'd drag you in to do a song not just because you know I you're a good lad and all the rest of it it was because I thought this will make for a good night and that was I think the end product was always I mean a lot of it I just saw the gig itself sometimes was almost like the bit in the middle of the sandwich between when you had a laugh before and then a laugh after and you had a big laugh in between. You know? yeah, it a, yeah, it was a sort of lock in in the three kings normally I ended, but there was kind of a, we saw if you turn up to someone's gig and it was the sort of running joke, was it to sort of see how quickly you can say, welcome to the stage. And you'd be like, oh, I haven't <laughs> yeah. even got, yeah. not even got a drink yet. <laughs> yeah, but you see, you see the thing is though, it's, it's funny how we, um, we all did that, but no one, you never, you never, Ducked and ducked the pub though, did you? you? Never. If I saw you in there, it's yeah. not like I'd go right. I'm gonna swerve that. I knew what was gonna happen. So of course it's fun to have a moan <laughs> about it and go, oh, can't I just have one night off? Oh, I'm such a struggling artist. But really, if you were that bothered, you wouldn't just swerve the pub. So it was Absolutely. very much that. And you had all kinds Absolutely. of as well, all kind of randoms. I mean, I, I remember, you know. No, named people who were kind of reasonably kind of famous through to, you know, big, it's very kind of deep muso guys who were involved in, um, you know, the MD of uh, West End shows through to, I remember a guy come over, he was a friend of Lee Wickens and he was the um, musical director for like loads of the Motown artists and he would tour with them and he got up with us and played and we made him play something horrendous because it was funny. I can't remember what it was. <laughs> but he played it. You know? and, and you've got probably the guy who's played all of this Motown and Stack stuff with all the original artists and we made him play, I don't know, play that funky music or something because it, 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 it was a, it appealed to our sense of humour and he totally got it and went along with it. You know, so that was... <laughs> but, and so how did the, how did you start the, the launches um, then? How did that all come about? Because there's obviously, there's, there's two guys in the band that I knew from from my, from school, like there were, there, I was in the in my f very first band with Davy um, when we were fifteen, and we were terrible, but it was good fun. Um, mm -hmm. And so I actually actually knew some of the guys, um, and it's funny how you could have all, all ended up in the band together. So how did that kind of all come about? Well, the the, the short answer is we uh, I was doing um, a sort of ska and reggae right review thing like a covers thing and stuff and one of the um, members of the band Cutty who's our keyboard player who's, who's basically the closest thing to a, to a genius I've probably met apart from yourself Rowley um, is thank he, you I oh, yeah, appreciate that See that just rammed in at the end um, <laughs> he, he wrote this song he had this song going and we were a covers band and I couldn't really get the rest of the covers band to get on board with it 
And I thought, this is just a wasted opportunity. So I, I set about, and it's the only time I've ever done it in my life, I set about hand-picking the perfect band to write that kind of music or similar kind of, you know, reggae influence stuff. <clears throat> and then the funny thing was, what happened was, everyone I picked in this band are still in it. No one left. You know, no one sort of went, oh, it's not for me. Because you always get those things wrong, don't you? It's like picking a football club, a team or anything. You get a team together and then Dave can't make it anymore because his missus has had a kid or something like that. Or, he, you know, falls out with Joe. and so. But there was none of that. So we've, we've recently expanded by one member. But apart from that, the original eight members of the band were there from the very first day, the very first recording. And the, re and the catalyst was to play this original song that had been written a couple of years before which we didn't really have and then to write some more songs but really just you know to go back to why are we in this why did we bother learning these instruments and it's to play music that we liked ironically the, the album that we ended up with is is kind of it's like it sounds like scar's weird mutated latin hip-hop rock brother because it's got sort of bits of everything in it but it, that was the basis of it that's where it started from it's, I mean, it's, it's such a great album, uh, The Leader, it's called, isn't it? It's such a fantastic album, and uh, I have to give you massive a congratulations <laughs> on that. <laughs> but it's, yeah, it's been a star. I've got a lot of friends that bring out albums. That's the, that's the one that I go back to all the time. Um, there's cool. some really good messages in there, some really great uh, performances in there. And it's just, it's just great to listen to, I have to say. It's brilliant. And um, so, like, who wrote all the stuff on that? Is it like, is it, you know, who's, who were the writers? Well, it's, it's, it genuinely, genuinely, I know, listen, I know bands always say this, and, but it, it genuinely, a lot of it is a collaboration. I mean, to be honest with you, um, I've got quite a lot of writing input on, on the album and um, Davey Hardman and Cutty have got um, songs maybe that we might have brought in 60% sort of form that it's almost done and then the band have contributed. And then there's others that are 100% from scratch eight people in a room, which you know yourself as a musician almost never happens. You can't get eight people in a band to agree on writing a song at the same time. It just doesn't work that way. <laughs> so um, there are kind of at this stage, because I think that's changing as well with the, what we're writing now and what we're trying to move ahead with. But there are definitely people who maybe were more the catalyst for ideas in the early days. But it, it, as we went through the album, or we started to put it together, um, and bear in mind there were songs that didn't make the album, um, it was more diverse. So although it might have been me and, and Davey and Cutty to start off with, there was, by the end of the process, more people were coming up with the bulk of the ideas. So it is quite across the board, to be honest with you. And I, I and think you can tell the difference, but you, you know, you need is to that sorry? I think you can tell the difference between who's kind of had the input, but then I suppose you, that's because I know the people, right? <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah. but that's, I think what makes it good is that they are actually, some of the songs are quite different. And you can tell because it's maybe a different songwriter, generally speaking. So, what, and what's the sort of Scar original? Because it's obviously it's a it's a scene that you kind of associate a lot with with covers bands, and and it's very it's huge. You know, it's a huge genre genre for that. Are there a lot of bands out out there on the scene writing original original Scar music? Yeah, well, it's kind of like you know. I think we spoke about this a long time ago. It's kind of, it's a weird thing because it's very much like the Irish original scene or maybe the folk scene or something like that in as much as that there are a lot of covers bands that, that do well. And you might even sometimes as an original band find yourself lower down on the bill uh, a festival than a covers band. And, and, and that's kind of a bit odd because you wouldn't get that in a rock festival, for example. But that said, you do tend to get, what I, I wasn't prepared for is that you, the people who are really into this are really into the, the whole scene and and they kind of like they li they know your lyrics i mean i did a gig um a while ago uh, we did a thing and um i forgot some of the words which you know is standard for me anyway and i wrote them and then afterwards somebody emailed me to tell me what the real words were which was hilarious for <laughs> 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 fyi <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no, i thought well you know fair enough um so yeah no it is different but but i i tend you tend to find the 
it's got a real crossover to you either are in very specific scene orientated festivals and things which are all the bands are kind of quite similar and it kind of twins quite well with the punk scene rockabilly scene is in there as well sometimes and reggae and those kind of things um <clears throat> But I, I've noticed more in the last 18 months, two years, you're starting to get more reggae and ska bands who are going into mainstream festivals, which is what we kind of get excited about, where you can see a band that's maybe playing kind of Brazilian folk music, and then you get a, a young indie band, and then us. And I kind of like that. I like it when it's quite diverse like that. When you, but there are definitely scene gigs, you know what I mean, where the, the bands are quite similar and not similar, but you know, there's a similar vein, there's a strong sort of vein through it. And then there's ones where you occasionally get parachuted in as a kind of, uh, all right, this will, this will, this will liven it up. Because I think we're quite danceable, so I think sometimes we, we sort of fall into that as well. And what's sort of been the highlight? What's, the, what's, been, what's been the best gig you've done? What's sort of highlight of your uh, career as, as the launches? We've done, do you know what, I, we've done, we've done, almost every gig we've done has been a laugh. And it's because genuinely we don't really take ourselves as seriously as, as perhaps we should in some ways. So we have a laugh doing it. And, and I can find, you know, Davey tripping over a wire hilarious for three songs, you know, um, the rest of the audience probably know, but so we enjoy it. But in terms of highlights, we were lucky enough to um, support Madness on their House of Fun uh, festival thing that they do and we did that three years in a row um, um, and that's great fun because it's a whole weekend uh, and um, and there's lots of kind of you know dressing up and being silly and that's 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 fun but uh, I really enjoyed um, we did a couple of um, nice nice festivals but for me personally there's a small festival that actually a mutual friend of ours puts on um, um, and it's, you know, sort of 500, 600 people festival up in Milton Keynes called Into the Wild. Yeah, and they, they the wild, yeah. what we played there um, in, I think we did it twice. And the first time we did it was one of the first times that we had done, you know, a whole 15 song set rather than, you know, your normal half an hour slot, hour slot, whatever. We actually did an hour and 20 minutes or an hour and that was really nice that so to me that was probably the best gig not maybe not in profile but in terms of actually displaying your wares and being able to build a show and being able to get the crowd to come with you and, and maybe understand what you're on about and maybe talk to them a bit more than you might have done on some of the other gigs that was that to me was really big and uh, this is the need to know music show uh, we like to ask everybody for a recommendation of uh, an artist they may not know uh, but you, that you feel that they do need to know. So who do you? Who's your recommendation, Jim Soul? Do you know I've got uh, I've, I've got a couple that I would, but I, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna hang my hat on um, a young band called uh, Slobheads, and they're a two piece punk rock band, and and it's drums, guitar, and voice, um, and they are genuinely brilliant. I mean, in in, in terms of Listen to them on um, Spotify and all those things, absolutely. But re to get what they're about, go and see them. They're a young band and, and they're full of energy. The songs are somewhere between satirical, serious and hilarious. And so, yeah, okay. Slobheads. Slobheads. We'll, we'll, yeah. We will put all the links to everything in the, uh, in the, in the, in yeah. the description. And what's your second one? You, had a, you said you had a second. Yeah, well, oh, no? yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I, this guy's been around for a while, but there's a guy that I really love called J.D. McPherson, who does, um, he, he's like a rockabilly sort of guy. And so he does, um, some of his later, he's done sort of three or four albums, American fella. He's come over a couple of times um, and he usually plays in like small gigs in Brighton or whatever, but he's an absolutely amazing. He's got a voice that sounds somewhere between um, Little Richard and uh, I don't know, maybe Hank Williams or something. And but he's got that rockabilly thing. But it, it's almost like he hasn't just gone. I'll just go through the rockabilly blueprint and play that rock and roll. He's it's much more interesting than that. And and amazing catchy songs, brass and all the rest of it. Arrangements are brilliant. Playing's brilliant. And also the lyrics are great. They're funny. Or interesting. So so we'll, so we'll put him in the put his link. JD McPherson. JD McPherson, right, lovely. And we will put I, all the I, links to all your stuff as well in there. But 
Well, I'm hoping uh, he's doing the same in America. I've never met the fella, but I'm hoping he's sat there somewhere <laughs> on, uh, on a Zoom call saying, now you want to check the launchers out. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've been doing plenty of that myself, to be fair. <laughs> yeah. I'm no JD McPherson. But, yeah. um, was, Who so, is? So what's, so what's next for you guys then? You've got the, the, the album's out now, isn't it? It's there to stream and to listen to and everything. Um, yeah. I mean... Lockdown and restrictions notwithstanding, what's the kind of next the next uh, next thing for you guys? We've um, right. So so the first the first thing we we've done. So the the album's out. That's 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 out there ready to go. And there's also a couple of singles on there as well. But the next one we're doing is is actually we're just going to do a soft a real soft release of um, the whole album again, but as a remix album. So we've given it to a real wide varied um selection of people and said remix this and some of the stuff that's come back is absolutely amazing i mean none of it is 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 um departs from the kind of idea behind the song but there are some of it's quite dancey some of it's quite stripped back and acoustic but it's it's basically so there is a remix album coming out quite soon which is just going to be a soft download it's going to be something we're not going to promote it massively we're just going to say it's all it's there go go listen and it's it's really just for us to close that chapter now on that album and say there's the album there's a, a remix version of it just to you know to, to have some other ideas and now we're into writing the new songs that's a fantastic idea i look, I look forward to that yeah 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 it's, it's good and, when, and what sort of time frame do we have for that you know i think um well it's pretty much in the in the can I, th I think it's just now it, it needs to just be packaged and put together um, properly. But we, um, I mean, we, we just, we're just really lucky. Some of the people, I mean, I'm not going to name drop, but some of the people that we've got to collaborate on this from such diverse kind of backgrounds, it, it's just genuinely fun. And I think, I think every band should do it. They should just take one of their albums and then get a load of a random bunch of 10 people to remix one track each and then see where it comes out like, because it is, it is good. It's, as an experiment, it's good. It's collaboration at its absolute extreme. Exactly. Well, do you know what? It, it, and, it, and it's also, it's, it's really kind of like, it's kind of humbling. It's almost like sort of like giving somebody else like photos of yourself when you were five, and then go, and you're a bit nervous <laughs> about your hairstyle or like some teenage spotty version of you and going, oh, can you do something with this, please, mate? So, um, <laughs> and, and what they come back with, we made a decision that whatever they came back with, we were gonna we were gonna put it on the album, regardless of of you know walks and all, and um, every single every single thing has got something about it, um, and that's what I liked about it. It was more like we were saying during lockdown, maybe it was that during lockdown we we can't do much, so so why don't we get everybody to do something and see what they think about it? And so that's so, so and it's come back and it's amazing. Fantastic, that's brilliant. I look forward to that. All right, well, thanks, Jim. Thanks for joining us and good luck with, it, with everything Pleasure. you're doing going forward and we'll, and we'll check back in in the future, no doubt. And uh, all right, mate. Well, thanks very much, everyone. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you, guys. Mr. Jim Soul. And we'll see, I will see you all soon out there in Gigland. <laughs>